Um, this video is about a special type of squash called the loche squash. Uh, it is a land race from Peru, the Lambayeque region of Peru. Land race just means that it's a, a cultivated variety that has uh, been specifically cultivated in this area for a very long time. And so it has properties that are um, very distinct to that one region and no other regions around the world. Um, it's a really difficult squash to uh, try to find seeds for. Thankfully, I was able to, to find some. Uh, my strategy has been, uh, if I can't find seeds somewhere, I check Instagram um, or other social media sites, and I find people who have those plants and um, are showing pictures of the seeds or the fruit or the vegetable, whatever it is, I message them, and one out of 10 times, they're willing to send me seeds. So that's what happened here. Um, Loche, uh, just some background on why it's special, is it's very, very fragrant. It's very, very flavorful. And uh, the way they use it in the dishes in Peruvian uh, cuisine is they'll actually use it almost like a truffle that would be used in French cuisine. So they'll let it dry and they'll add small pieces to a casserole, for example. Um, and instead of just like cooking the squash in water, you're cooking the uh, piece of squash uh, in the food itself, whether it's soup or uh, stew or casserole, whatever it is. Um, and it will actually flavor everything else in the dish. You'll get this like sweet muskies, uh, like uh, squash flavor. I haven't tried it myself, but apparently it's, a, it's one of the uh, really important flavors and unique flavors of that type of cuisine. And they, they go crazy for it there. I mean, there are there are terracotta statues, thousands and thousands of years old, that show um, the loche squash the way exactly the way it looks today. Um, so you can tell it was a really important um, food crop for them. Uh, and the other interesting thing about it is, over this time they've selected somehow to create mostly seedless varieties. So if you can imagine like a, a butternut squash with a big bell end on it. Um, you know, uh, it, it kind of has a somewhat similar shape. I think it sort of gets small, smaller into a larger um, end on the blossom end. Um, and usually you would expect that to be full of seeds in a uh, pumpkin or uh, squash or something like that. But in this case, it's mostly solid and mostly full of just squash uh, meat. And so you can cut it and then scoop out a little bit of seeds, then you can basically eat the rest of it. Um, and it's, uh, it goes for very high prices in, in Peru because um, it's very sought after for the reasons I talked about. So I finally got those seeds um, and they look just like regular old pumpkin seeds. Yeah, they're just white. But the really interesting thing about it is um, if I smell these, it is right away like super pungent. Um, and to describe the smell of these seeds to you, uh, it is, it smells like corn chips or popcorn or something. Like it literally just smells like these are like toasted and seasoned and like almost almost like a Dorito or something like that, or, a, or a, what do you call them, Frito or something. It's so strange. And I messaged the person and I, I said, hey, uh, you know, are you sure these weren't like toasted or um, like made for eating? You know, because sometimes you, you can take all these seeds out of pumpkins or squash and you can toast them and turn them into savory snacks, which I thought maybe is what happened. And I'm smelling like the oil or the seasoning or something. But no, he said he, he took this straight out of the squash and sent them to me. So uh, if this is any indicator of what the squash is gonna taste like and smell like, it's pretty exciting. The way they cultivate this uh, is by uh, vegetative propagation. So literally, literally they'll like, if at the end of the season, uh, they will um, take a piece of the uh, new growth on the plant and just stick it in some soil and then that will start a brand new plant and that's how they propagate um, the, the plants as opposed to like, like I said, there's not a lot of seeds so it's harder to um, harvest the seeds and plant the seeds because uh, they're mainly seedless. 
you know, if this if this was the amount of seeds that came from one squash, then you know, I'm looking at maybe fifth, ten to fifteen seeds, which is like not much at all. Um, so I don't know if it's going to uh, grow that well uh, in this climate because I don't really have um, a full uh, year-round growing season. So it's possible that uh, you know I can't keep the the plant alive all year long, right? So um, I'll need to rely on seeds every year to to grow this. And if if uh, one of the crops fails or uh, if I don't get enough seed, it's going to be hard to propagate it out and grow it year after year, but we'll see. So this is an experiment here. Uh, so this is going to be the first video. Um, I just have the seeds, uh, but I'm going to be starting them next spring. And uh, we're going to find out. Actually, no, that's, uh, that's a lie. I'm actually going to start some right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and try planting the loche seeds um, in these two containers here. It's late summer not the best time to be planting squash seeds but um, I'd like to get a couple of these seeds started I can potentially overwinter the plant in the greenhouse um, some of the seeds I received were cracked so I'm gonna actually start with planting those because they probably won't last very long so this is gonna be the first planting of the loche um, into some good potting mix and uh, we'll see how they sprout in a week or two Okay, so it's been about three or four days and the loche squash is uh, sprouting here. The other one that I planted that was kind of a cracked seed um, hasn't sprouted up yet. I just kind of pulled apart the soil and it looks like it might be sprouting. I'm not exactly sure, but this one, which is from a nice healthy seed, is doing good. So, um, you know, it's, like I said, it's late summer here, uh, so it's not going to be able to survive unprotected. Um, and I have a greenhouse that is Right now, covered in weeds, straight ahead, um, that I'm trying to build. So hopefully I can get that up in time and um, this guy can live in there or maybe in the house uh, and hopefully survive the winter. <clears throat> and then I'll plant the other ones out uh, the following spring. I can propagate it vegetatively uh, from the, the shoots, the new shoots, and maybe I can uh, root those um, and grow them indoors or send them to other people. Um, and just kind of observe how the plant grows so that next year I can actually have more experience growing them. But uh, definitely watch out for those videos and hit subscribe if you want to uh, stay up to date on the, how this project goes and how this experiment goes because I'm excited.